Today we're going to be talking about the different testing options for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you know, why I recommend one over the other, and then how to perform a SIBO breath test. Hey folks, my name is Todd Mansfield. I'm a clinical herbalist here in Byron Bay, Australia, and today we're going to be covering more information on SIBO as part of the SIBO series of videos that I'm putting together. Now don't forget that there's an ebook that goes along with these videos, free to download. It's in the link in the description below, and it's well worth a download just to do a deep dive on small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So getting into the different testing options, it can get a little bit complex and a little bit convoluted. I'm going to try and keep it nice and basic and simple. You've got the aspirate and culture, so that's kind of the gold standard that's not really a great gold standard. Um, they only really use that one in research settings, so it's not applicable to you as a person who may have SIBO and wants to test for it. In my clinical practice, I often recommend SIBO breath testing. So what is a SIBO breath test? So basically a SIBO breath test, you want to starve the possible bacterial overgrowth. You know, we don't know if you have it yet. And then we want to feed it a sugar and test to see if these bacteria in your small bowel, which may or may not be overgrown, produce a gas. We're going to be capturing the exhaled gas over a period of time and when we read the uh, results of the test, if we see a spike in the gas, then we know that there is bacteria that have overgrown in the small bowel. There are two main options and then one third one that can be used if uh, we really want to cover all the bases. We've got lactulose, we've got glucose, and we've got fructose. So the lactulose glucose debate, which one's better? I mean, you're gonna get different opinions, there's different camps, and there's reasons for some people saying lactulose is better and some people saying that glucose is better. Lactulose, it's a particular sugar that we can't actually digest, it's a disaccharide, and that means that it makes it all the way down to our large bowel, where the large bowel microbiota can then ferment the sugar and produce the gas. Glucose, on the other hand, we can absorb, and that means that if the SIBO is farther on down our small intestine, that glucose may miss it. That's one reason why people don't like glucose so much. On the other hand, lactulose speeds up gut transit time. So when you consume it and you're looking for that spike in the graph, if it happens a little bit later, you know, 80 minute mark, 90 minute mark, 100 minutes, then it could actually be just the large bowel and it's not actually SIBO at all. So that's one of the downsides of lactulose. That's the basics of the lactulose and the glucose. Fructose we can save just in our back pocket and we can use all three if we are concerned that SIBO's there and we really don't want to miss it. Sometimes I use lactulose. If the results are a little bit iffy, I might follow that up with glucose. Sometimes I run them both together on separate days. You know, it really depends on you and your digestive symptoms, how long you've been unwell for, how much money you're happy to spend, and how quickly you want to get better, right? These are all factors we have to take into account. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed the video. Get in touch with me here at Byron Herbalist. Yeah, I'd really love to hear from you, and we'll see you in the next SIBO series video. Thanks for watching.